That's right. We're back with the Live with Aaron and Kelly show. And we are going to go right into our second segment with our actor and celebrity right here, Richard Inigas. Thank you so very much for coming on to the show. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank I thought you. this was the Richard, Aaron, and Kelly show. <laughs> oh, is that how we're doing it? Kelly, Richard, and Aaron show. <laughs> I like that one better. Very charming. Very charming. Yeah, Richard's a, uh, a Mr. Charming. I've got to say for those, uh, now Richard, you and I met through what's called the Latino Theater Club. Yeah. Uh, and and we, when I first met you, I mean, this is how down to earth he is. We did a red carpet thing for a, a theater production, and my cameraman was not there at the time. And you know who stepped in? Richard. He stepped in to do the camera. And I, I was like, no, you could be in front. And he's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll support you. And I was like, we just met for the first time. And, our, I mean, it was like a – it was – that's how down to earth you are. We think, and, but I hear you get that all the time. When I said you were going to be on the show, everybody has said, Richard's a great guy. What, what makes you such a – I mean, why do you come down to earth and, and, and be with us, you know? And, because they're all afraid of me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to say something that's going to make them <laughs> shiver and uh, say, oh, my God, he's going to say something that they're not going to like. So, <laughs> and, and you come you know, from a long list of TV and film. You go back to the day, and I, I have to just say a couple names. You guys all know Anthony Quinn, Robert Mitchum, Lucille Ball, Angela Lansbury, Glenn Ford, Ricardo Montalban. You've performed with each one of these uh, stars and celebrities. I mean, what has that been like to be able to be a part of that? era of great celebrity. I mean, before you have King Kardashian and other <laughs> wannabe celebrities. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. you had true uh, celebrity. Well, <laughs> boy, you, you threw me for a loop. I did. Uh, it was a great question, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> whoa. Well, it's how he uh, broached the uh, question, uh, with all due respect, with Kim Kardashian, of course. Uh, and I enjoy that show. I used to... Uh, Oh, that's, that's that's my little. Is that your phone? Right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was on the Latino Theater Club. Ah, making sure everything is okay there. But uh, you know, it's amazing when you start off um, in a career that it just surprises you as as you grow uh, as a performer. I was very fortunate. I was living in a mortuary, going to college, uh, and um, there was a little group of uh, uh, community. Uh, oriented youths and uh, they asked me to come down and be a part of what they were doing in, in um, oh, uh, where was it? Uh, well, yeah, you were East L.A. But, right. But then eventually uh, one of the people called me and said we're doing a series over at uh, PBS of all places mm -hmm. and uh, would I like to come on audition because they were going to use real people. I said, well, I'm a real person. Why not? <laughs> that was pretty. <laughs> yeah. And um, from there, they taught us acting, three-week crash course. And from that, uh, eventually, I was selected to be one of the family members of this series called Canción de la Raza, Song of the People. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. Then I just kept working as a performer. And uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, I was passionate about what I was doing. And right away, I was starring and guest starring in various television shows and TV movies. So, but working with these people, you know, it's a, it's an interesting question. In that, and of course, Kelly will uh, um, back me up on this one. You know, an actor's an actor, and when you're performing, that's all they are. It's not Anthony Quinn. It's not Robert Mitchum. It's right. not Robert Wagner. Right. It's you know a fellow performer. And mm -hmm. if you look at them as that icon that they've um, built up, uh -huh. built up and created yeah. uh, uh, in their own right. Well, then you can't perform because you're in awe, and you can't do that. You go out there. It's not Anthony Quinn. It's that character that you're interfacing with, mm -hmm. and you have to give 100%. And believe me, they give it back to you, too. Yeah. Yeah, because if you get caught up in that, it's almost a disservice to the project, you know, you know, for the, the characters, the entire story. So, yeah, I think that's really good. Has there ever been a time when you got a little, you know, nervous around someone because of maybe their status? Or did you say, oh, my God, I can't believe or was it always just, eh, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was always nervous. You oh. never <laughs> stop being nervous because there's so much to think about, you know, and you try to get lost in, in – um, the character in the situation and uh, um, and I had quite a few times where there were problems like Anthony Quinn is a very strong was a very strong passionate human being I mean the guy towered over me 
but along with that, you, you, the legacy that he brings with him to the set, and then you're standing there with Anthony Quinn, and you have to have a one-on-one yeah, -on -one yeah, and right match there. exactly yeah. match right there, right his there. passion. Mm -hmm. And when you make a mistake, you know you try not to. But you know you're a young. I was a young actor. It was mm -hmm. one of my. Did, what was say, Did you ever make a mistake that they? Oh, of course. Uh, I, 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 He's I, human. Guess who was <laughs> the, the the director at the who? time? Who? Was um, uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, <laughs> A big director. A very big <laughs> no, no. It, it, it actually, it was another actor. Oh, that was directing oh. at the same time. Uh, remember uh, Casablanca? Yes. Not uh, Mr. Bogart or, you know, it was the other third wheel. Um, oh, my goodness. See, I'm getting older and I can't remember so the it, damn thing anymore. <laughs> he was directing and he had a German accent, but he's Swiss, I think. He was directing you and he had and a moment. What oh, was the moment? The moment is I forgot one line in between a monologue that Anthony Quinn was saying oh. and uh, uh, accosting me. He was trying to get information out of me as a character. And um, uh, we'd only rehearsed it twice because at the last moment he asked for the director, we, we should break this up. This mm -hmm. is a long monologue. And... Uh, and it's critical because they were coming over my shoulder. I had to move to the back of a chair, and so that was my mark. And they mm -hmm. come over your shoulder onto him. So all of these intricate things. And you know, I had two rehearsals, but we had already rehearsed the it the other way before. Notes. Yeah, all the blocking right. notes right. and stuff like that to be able to adjust. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so once we started to shoot. You froze. I didn't freeze. I was so. In oh, it. you were was, so in his performance. I was into You're it. I was listening to him, and he was <laughs> in the awe moment. Yeah, and he was coming at me. You know, here's Anthony Quinn. You know the character. He's, he's playing the mayor of the city, and uh, right. he's coming at me, and I'm looking at him defiantly, and going, <laughs> "Line." You're like, God, he's when do good. I? He stops. <laughs> Anthony Quinn stops just there. I, 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 time is going by. I'm going. My head is breaking. I mean, I, I'm ready to explode. I'm going. Oh, my line, my line. So I throw out my line, and then he keeps going. Oh, now, he didn't break. He, he didn't break because it was his close-up mm -hmm. right over my my face. Wow. So, so he was right critical. on. So we stop. You know, cut. Right. It's over. <clears throat> he goes, oh, and Anthony Wynn has that growl of a voice. <laughs> 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 I'm looking at him going, uh-oh. And then the people playing my parents... Uh, they're going. Oh, what do we do now? And then the director comes over. Tony, Tony, what, what, what's, what's the matter, Tony? <laughs> hey, what a kid, you know. You know the line. <laughs> I'm going. Oh my God. Oh. And he goes to a chair and he sits down. And, goes, oh. and he's doing this whole thing. And I'm going. Wait a minute. I have a right here, so so I forget yeah. a little line, you know. I'm, yeah. I was doing right. my job. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. You know Thank and. You, uh, so we do it again, and I do it fine. Uh, but then the crew was coming around, and they would tap me on the show. Good, good work, kid. Good work. Good, good, good. good. good support. Oh, yeah, wow. That must oh, have been an interesting moment. Yeah, I mean, it was terrible. I, I would have been. Yeah, and that's good because that, that showed, again, your ability to rise above. You, you didn't let to. it take you for the second round. You stood up. Well, that, but that's the actor. and you, 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 It's not ego. Mm -hmm. It's professionalism, and you learn that right away because you cannot be intimidated by what's there before you. Like right now, I mean, this is a radio station. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I very rarely do I go to radio stations, but look at all the equipment. And, and we, and I, yes. cameramen. <laughs> That's right, we do it all here. <laughs> Luis Serrano, all I mean, huh? come on, I'm, in, I'm impressed. And, but, you know, you plow forward. That's what it's all about. That's who we are as, as performers. Yeah. Now, I also want to say, you did it at a time where a lot of, and, and I'm going to say Latinos, it's very, Latinos is very broad, mm. Hispanic, Latin American, but Latinos in general had a hard time getting, or, or they were not, uh, they would cast other people, other ethnicities in Latino roles. They wrote the Latino role, but they would let somebody else Mexican do it roles. on Mexican roles, right? And you were able to come in at that time where you kind of started to fill those roles and have others that were coming well, in, right? Well, you know it's interesting? It, it, you're right. And at the same time, uh, there's 
we're, we're losing something here. And, and the problem wasn't so much that Latinos weren't playing Latinos or Mexicans weren't playing Mexicans. We weren't playing the leads. Mm -hmm. Anytime there was a, 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 a role that required uh, star power because – they're going to be working with Anthony Quinn or they're going to be working with Gregory Peck or right, whoever, right. they would invariably go to other ethnic uh, groups to fill that role. And the rest of us sit back and we go, well, wait a minute. Are we not good enough to play ourselves? Mm -hmm. Are we not strong enough to stand and, and be uh, in a confrontation with this persona? Um, that's what I came into, and apparently I was very good <laughs> at, yeah, at yeah. confronting the issue <laughs> because there I was. We had Anthony Quinn coming at you at one time, you could and I had him. to come back and hear him. <laughs> Henry Darrow was in that episode. Wow. And Henry and I had to do a, uh -huh. a scene where we go at it, and, uh -huh. and Henry's a powerful performer. I love Henry Darrow, and if you ever see any of his work, uh, you know you you see the passion in him. He's, he's a method actor, and right. that was funny unto itself because <laughs> here I. I am, you know, I'm just a young guy. PBS trained. <laughs> yeah, PBS trained. I'm learning, and I'm not into the method, although I read everything, Stanislavski and so forth, and the group theaters, uh -huh. uh, 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 Harold Clerman. But there I was, and there uh, on the opposite side of the set uh, we weren't shooting was um, Henry Darrow, and he's looking at me. And he's and he's going and grimacing at me. Oh my and goodness! Seeing these epithets of his character. You know, really, right. Yeah, he's getting. Yeah. I didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> you were just like, "What is wrong with this?" Yeah, guy? I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm on. looking behind me and I'm looking to the side of me and I'm going, "Wow!" <laughs> Get this guy do? some medication. What did he have yeah. breakfast? <laughs> well, years later, uh -huh. I tell him about this. We're at a, in a panel together, right? Um, uh, which I actually put together for. Um, uh, w women to find employment and so f and so forth. Uh, we need that again, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and and, uh, and I tell the story, and he was die he died laughing right there, <laughs> and, and it was just so hilarious because he didn't realize he had right. he was doing that. Right. But that was part of him getting into it, getting ready to to emote, so to speak. Mm -hmm. His passion Bring those was emotions gonna, exactly. To the Ricardo Montalban used to do the same thing. Oh, really? You'd be in the set and you'd hear off in the distance and I go, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is that? Yeah. What's going on? And I'd, I'd look around and there he was. <laughs> and I'd get, oh, okay, I get it. I got it. Sure, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm the actor, but you know. Did you ever get to that point where you yeah, finally you use? Do, like do you do that now, or no? no? You still don't do that. No, no. <laughs> you see, you know what my motivation is. Tell me. My paycheck. Oh. The if it's in the script and it tells me to go from point A to point B, I don't argue. I know how to take you my You follow line. direction well. Well, you know, if the line is only two words and you have to go from here to Timbuktu, well, you make it on those two lines. Yeah. Because that's, 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 you're the one trained. You have to know all of that. Now, like I said uh, to the audience that don't know, we met through the Latino Theater Club. Theater, and yes. what is the Latino Theater Club? Latino Theater Club was actually put together by myself and uh, Maria Richwine. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what we did, we, we felt that we needed a way for actors to support actors, actors to support other artists, artists to support actors, right. etc. But by the same token, we don't have the kind of money that people think we may have. You know, so That is very true. I didn't realize <laughs> that. You always think, yeah, you think that they live in penthouses and huge mansions. And no, no, we're all scrambling for the buck mm -hmm. just like anybody else and getting that job, you know. But uh, we'd like a discount on a ticket. Of course. Sure. So, but, and we want to support each other absolutely. at the same and time. And the best way to, to do that is to get group rates. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were looking for. And that's how we basically started. And you were very kind enough to do our red carpet stuff. Yes, that was fine. That we fun. never expected you did to, the, to You do. did the camera for me. Yes. <laughs> One time. One time. <laughs> and, uh, and also... Um, we do gallery openings. People come mm -hmm. on our site and let us know about gallery openings. We go to those. And I want to tell people, again, you're very big because this is on Facebook. We have yes. a group page, Latino Theater Club. You're, we'll invite you to. Yes. As well. It's not just right. Latinos. Latinos. Yeah. I love it. Just it's, happen to give it that name. Yes, you know, it is. Uh, if you could think of it as a theater club, definitely. Yeah, exactly. But what came up very interesting in our discussion because somebody brought it to our attention, and this goes again, two things, what you, what you said earlier, you know, Latinos not having 
having in certain big roles, and then, of course, uh, directors. And we're going to bring the two together. Now, NALIP, which is the Nas- National Association of Latino Independent Producers, right. they put out this, this article, which uh, it was entitled, No Qualified Latino Directors for PBS Latino American Series. And this series, is the name of it is Latino Americans. From what I understand, uh, it says that the, instead of bringing a, a Latino director, they're bringing in a former director for the BBC, David Belton for the position. Now, the, again, this is going back to your PBS. Uh, roots, yeah. yeah, what does That's this, cool. how does this make a Latino actor and, of course, directors that you would know, how would this make you feel? Hearing that they're going to make a Latino Americans and a non-Latino that is not is going to make it. And, and more importantly, it. yeah, that they said they couldn't find a qualified Latino director. Well, let's put it this way. I think... Artists are qualified to do anything because you're an artist. Therefore, you're trained to direct, whether it's uh, you're doing a story about the Holocaust, you're doing a story about uh, the Peruvian Andes or Chilean Andes or whatever. You know, we can all do it. But there are sensibilities here. There there are opportunities in the sense that uh, we have a community of uh, uh, talented, um, trained directors, writers, actors, etc. And now in this particular case, it stipulates there that you have producers. Yes. Segment producers who are Latinos. Yes. And okay. Latinos again is very broad. The Latinos Well, a Latino could be anything. Right. You know, it could be <laughs> I mean it could be from Spain, from right. Mexico, Puerto, Puerto Rican, Rico, N- mm-hmm. Nicaraguan, Argentinian. Uh-huh. So it's a family. Yes. Mm-hmm. But for a group of producers who are Latinos not able to find a qualified Latino director from their own community says a lot about them. Mm -hmm. Not about us, but about them. Because we know we have qualified people. Absolutely. And it's not hard to find. Like I said, we're, not only are we on Facebook, but we're everywhere. Right. I mean, you know, so. Well, there's the DGA. The, it's a perfect exactly. uh, place to start. You know, the, the, the Latino uh, committee at the DGA. For those of you who don't know what DGA is, the Directors uh, Guild of America, uh, as well as the Latino uh, Writers Committee at the Writers Guild of, uh, of America West. I was the chair of that committee for two years. So, um We have qualified people. They're not making an effort to really look. Now, David Belton brings those Mm -hmm. some... uh, Which he has qualifications. Oh, absolutely. He's done some great projects. Now, if they just wanted to say... We're bringing in a great director that to, to, to help the project, and we feel that he's going to do a great – that's different mm-hmm. had they said that, mm-hmm. but they didn't say that. We've been demeaned for a long time, uh, not only on the acting front, uh, but on, on all areas, writing, directing. Uh, and everybody says, well, you know, we as producers and writers and directors in our own right, maybe we should just go out and produce and do our own stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine and dandy, but we don't have the financial support. Needed, yet. right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what people forget. They forget that uh, if Remember, you're going to bring that yeah, money. If you're in Spain, mm-hmm. the Spanish government has subsidies. If you're in Mexico, the Mexican government subsidizes. As we get to mm-hmm. Cesar Chavo's biopic right now, it's being subsidized by the Mexican government. Consequently, they can do the movie anywhere or any way they want. Right. And we have no say so, but we're talking about Cesar Chavez, who's a union icon. Richard, thank you so very much. We're going to keep you here yeah, because we're going to have our longer. next segment business.